NBA 2K18 tutorial number 50. We are at the half century mark. So today we will be adding another user action to the pace motion cuts freelance that I showed you guys yesterday. So if you haven't seen tutorial 49, make sure you check that out for the two or three branches that I did add in for user manipulation from that on yesterday. So I will also be showing you the default pace motion branches today. So the ones that do come with the game by default. So no user manipulation, just the one that does come with the freelance on its own, naturally designed by 2K. Uh, there's also going to be an important family update to the set fist 15y that i have showed you guys before i have found a way to improve this play even further to get you even more baskets so i want to be adding into that and also there will be online footage today of me showing you why my sets are better than default freelance branches because i actually want to have an important discussion with you guys uh, in this tutorial also of my views on play branches and why you don't want to run too much of the freelance ones so but let's begin with our pace motion cuts quick pose up twist screen that's what i call it and to do this you need to have the center or the power forward to bring up the ball to start up the attack so you can see me bringing it up with dwight here and now uh, what you want to do is you want to call quick pose up with dwight and then be prepared to hand it off to the wing as you can see me hand it off to batum here and once the handoff is complete you want to hold L1 and use Howard again, who bought up the ball, to send you as the screener to go into the single side. So this twisting kind of action with Howard bringing up the ball, handing it off to Batum and running that pick and roll, and with the wing filling the side, really opens up the paint. And you can see it here, I'm bringing it with Dwight, I have call quick post up. I'm holding it on, I'm just going to hand it to Batum, I hand it to the best handler. And you can see me call for the screen while Batum is going the opposite direction. This twist really shifts the hedge defender. And while the wing is also filling up the help side, so that hurts everything, which opens up the row and corner shooters. You can see uh, because of the extra movements coming with this twist action, with the big man initiating the offense, kind of with this initial handoff flowing into the screen to the single side, the defense is bound to break somewhere. And you just got to find it because of the roll man, the driver going to the paint and the wing filling the top. Those three kind of movements with the corners completely occupied really, really hurts the defense. And you just got to make sure when you do set this twist screen, it's got to be sending the handler to the single side, which will open up the defense to give you some looks anywhere on the court, either corners, the dive, or the drive. So this is also a great way to get the center involved, and it adds a new element to your offense that users online would not be able to, just not, they won't be able to be familiar with it, right? Because you have a center bringing up the ball, handing it off to a guy, and running a screen. Like that's really twisty and it's really different. Obviously you can also have the power forward set it up and use the center as the screen it, but that obviously takes away the uh, twist aspect of it. It goes back to what I showed you yesterday, beautiful reverse, but this also works. But I do suggest bring it up with the center and try this out for yourself. Once again, the whole thing about this is, is just little, little movements adding up to break the defense. You gotta find the seams yourself. Something is bound to break, but you gotta make the right read because not the same thing breaks all the time, okay? So, but I will be showing you guys online footage of this, I think, tomorrow. So, and uh, there's another thing I wanna show you. If you stand still with the ball in pace motion cut, place, play branches will trigger on their own. But I would say this is more like a third tier option. So, the uh, user manipulation I showed you in pace motion, that's option one. Option two is running, obviously, my money sets. But this is kind of like a third tier, but do mix it in, but don't heavily rely on this. So to me, this is like a normal player's way to use freelance, where you swing the ball around, you stand still, the branches come up, and you read and react. Now, this is a very sim and beautiful way of playing 2K, but I don't consider this the most efficient way. Now, it's effective, but I do consider a lot of these triggers as slow and inconsistent. You can see me, I'm triggering here, I'm doing well. But because there's lack of consistency and last, lack of user manipulation, I can't really hurt the mismatches. I mean, I'm reading and reacting. This feels good initially when it works, but it doesn't take advantage of mismatches or the defense's tendencies that you start to notice throughout the game. Because you can call the right sets and do that here, You're it's working, I know. And it looks great. So I'm not telling you to not do this, but just understand to me, 
This is a third tier option and I believe it should be treated that way. I say make this in, mix it in, but don't use it as a primary option. To me it's more like if the first two options don't work, if my user manipulation don't work, if my sets don't work, then I just break into this naturally and use it as the third option in the entirety of the offense as I flow through it in a possession in 24 seconds, all right? So we're also going to look at a fist 15 y from the Boston and Spurs playbook. I actually discovered a secret user triggered branch. This is much better than default freelance to me. Like to be able to trigger these branches is much better than what you can trigger in pace by default just standing still. So the regular version of this I've showed you guys before have you waiting for the double screen. So if you don't kick it to the wing shooter out of this down screen and you just wait this out, you get this nice double screen sending you to the baseline which we all know is deadly because it opens up the die for the big man and also the reverse layup or the corner shooter. So you saw that worked out. I missed the open shot but that's fine. But actually, what you really want to do is you want to do it this way. You want to have that guy come up, don't pass him, but you want to kick it to the opposite wing. So don't wait. Swing the ball to the opposite wing and then pass it back to the handler. You see, as your ball is going back, the screens are coming. So this is a lot of extra momentum. It gets you in the full speed into the double screen and it shifts the defense. You can see by running it this way, the pace and the spacing of the entire play improves. The momentum coming from that extra pass helps a ton. You can see that? Just the double screen coming in this way while the ball is being swung is beautiful. I'll show you guys online video of this tomorrow. And you can see it does end up throwing off users because that initial swing pass is kind of like a distraction kind of thing. They think you're going that way, but you're immediately swinging it back. And when they realize you already swung it back, the double screen's already coming. So this is why I never tell you guys to use 2K's freelance branches because if you know the sets and you familiarize yourself with the tutorials I show you, like you can run branches like these. And to me, there is no better branch in any of the freelance in 2K this year that is as good as just this one. And remember, this is just one set and one user manipulation of the set. Like we have plenty of sets, right? So do it this way. And I hear some online gameplay using my sets. Just me showing you using my sets are way better. And default freelance version because waiting for those branches is just inefficient. So you can see me running the set uh, Fist 2-6 side here using the uh, Milwaukee Bucks. And you're doing similar thing to a freelance. Like freelance, you bring it up, you stop for a little bit and you wait for branches to come up. So why not call a set and trigger the best branches possible in the game? Now obviously you need a lot of set knowledge to do this and you need to know which ones are the most efficient set and which playbook they're in and if it's in the playbook does it have the right handler and you need to set it up in the assignment. I mean, that, that's a lot of work but that's why I'm around family. I have done all of that work for you. I have done the research. I have done the setup. Like look at the field goal percentage here. It's ridiculous. And here's another set, Fist Free 5 Flow. So I've done the research. I've showed you guys the use of manipulation. I've showed you guys all the options available. I mean... You got, and you're watching me, so you gotta do it this way. Avoid relying on freelance branches. Just get good, you don't have to get good at all the sets. Heck, get good at three of them. Three of them, like that's not asking for too much, right? And the playbooks I've showed you guys, at least are three or five, sometimes even seven if it's a really good playbook. So get good at two or three sets. And just remember these branches, remember who to call for and how to trigger it, and remember the multiple options I've showed you. And you will never need to run a default freelance branch in your life. Which is great because then you can use the freelance in the user manipulation way I showed you like calling quick post up with pace motion cuts to trigger multiple middle and wing pick and roll options because those are what I consider more like a life ball style of attack. When you're using branches like these I consider this like a dead ball style of attack. It still works but there's a difference between life ball and dead ball to me. So you can see uh, my bucks are doing great here. I miss the open shot but I don't mind it too much so we're able to just uh, defeat the 76ers user in this online game. So. Here are the online settings because I know you guys are interested if you want to see it. So it's slightly updated because I've been changing my game here and there. Also, uh, update of upcoming content. Uh, what do you guys want to see? If you guys let me know, here's, here are the controller settings too. Like in the comment section, let me know what you guys want to see from me coming up. Obviously, I still got more schemes coming. I've been really enjoying this pace motion cuts that I nearly modified and 2K fixed the middle pick and roll. I took it online recently and the results have been quite amazing because I used to use the Warriors motion cuts with the uh, 76ers playbook for my Warriors. That was the initial scheme I designed. I, take, I use the 76ers again in a different scheme with the pace motion cuts and a different playbook. Uh, Fist 15Y from the Boston playbook. I'll be showing you guys that video tomorrow, I think. Yeah, tomorrow. 
and it's just much better. Also, in the defensive scheme, like you will be able to see, I do think the pace motion cuts. It, it favors you to be able to have three guys on your team scoring consistently. When I was doing the Warriors motion cut 76ers playbook, I felt like I was only making two guys score and like one guy was scoring a lot. Like the opportunities was kind of like just for two people. But with pace motion cuts and my new Boston playbook scheme with this 1-5 wide, I feel like I'm helping three guys score and that's a lot better than two guys. So let me know how you guys feel about this. I will show you guys the full online gameplay with pace motion cuts and uh, what well, pace motion cuts with also flow sets to be used as the branches so you'll be seeing that tomorrow so make sure you check that out so as so you the, the user settings you see here they're pretty i think they're rather similar to the ones i've designed i'll probably do another defensive settings video down the line if you guys want to see that but in the comment section let me know what you want to see i know a lot of you guys are asking for my team i will start in december i just prefer to start my team in december when more cards are out because for those of you who play my team you know how 2k is like more cards come out during christmas time in december so i can make you know more interesting teams or more interesting schemes all right as always thanks for coming by uh if you got any questions about the settings ask me below i will be making a new video that soon and i am very proud that i have reached tutorial 50 this year a lot of you guys know in 2k17 i stopped around i think 42 or 43 just because the game was very bad last year like there's no going around that it was just a bad game this year much better much more innovative much more fun so i'll be showing you guys more all of that and also some newly designed playbook in a better way a much better way to play 2k 18 my league offline i'll be showing you guys that video maybe on wednesday so as always thanks for coming have a nice weekend enjoy your food and i'll see all of you next time